obviously you come from you know one of the most well-known families in racing so tell me about your personal background uh well my mom actually pre-ran the Baja 500 when she was seven months pregnant with me so <laughs> racing's pretty much been uh, <laughs> in my blood since the beginning My brother has raised NASCAR and IndyCar, uh, the Dakar Rally, a bunch of off-road stuff. Uh, he's actually started his own series now. My sister is the only female to win the Baja 1000 overall. And then in 2006, her and I started All American Girl Racing, and we're the only all-female team to ever finish the Baja 1000. Wow, so that's quite the impressive resume. <laughs> so well, you, it's a family resume. It's, it's not necessarily just my resume. <laughs> So it, 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 it's in your blood. Yes. Um, and I actually married into it too. So my husband is Ryan Hunter Ray, the IndyCar driver. It actually worked out perfect that I'm going to be in the first uh, stock production electric vehicle to ever run up Pikes Peak. So I think I'm kind of making history today. You are. You're making, yeah. You're making new history, and you've been pre-writing it. So, is it as daunting as you thought? I was really intimidated during the test we came up. Yeah. I was only able to run the lower section because uh, Ryan was racing on Sunday in Detroit, so I had to leave to go watch his race. And um... We drove up the middle section, well, all of the way to the top, actually, but uh, in a passenger car. It can be very intimidating, especially I'm scared of heights, so uh, I was sitting in the back seat just looking over the edge the whole time going, what did I get myself into? <laughs> but then once I uh, did the practice days, I feel completely confident in the car and myself. It's it's really fun actually. You wouldn't think that, but you kind of just forget about the cliffs that are off the side and, and just take the car for what it can do. Now your car um, is electric, which means it's quiet. It's very quiet. Except it isn't, right? It's got well, a, it's, it has a siren built into it. I think I'm it. actually the loudest car in the entire field. <laughs> I have a, an ambulance siren on my car, so uh, the Pikes Peak promoters they make it uh, they regulate it so you have to be able to have like an audible sound so fans can hear you coming because they will cross the road and everything else and you really can't hear the electric car at all when it's when it's normally running so um, I got yeah I got a siren <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get like you know the sound of a V8 or something like that but apparently if you do the sound of a, of a large engine uh, it draws motor, people. It, yeah, it draws them actually to the road. If they hear an ambulance sign, they're kind of going to go away from the road. So I think it will benefit me on race day. You, you couldn't get much different, right? Going from an off-road kind of Baja experience yeah. to going now what is completely on-road electric car experience. Well, and that was the thing when Roger first asked me, I kept thinking it was still unpaved. And yeah. so I thought, wow, this is perfect for me. And I've only raced on pavement once before. I do a lot of go-karting, but I raced at the Long Beach Grand Prix Celebrity Race, mm -hmm. Celebrity Pro Race. And um, that's the only time I've raced on pavement before, so you know, I at first I was like, wow, oh, I don't know how this is gonna fit my driving style, but it's actually it's it's great. I like that it's um, paved all the way to the top now, and I really think this weekend, you know, obviously it's gonna set a new record, but people have to keep in mind that there's gonna be three records. There's the complete dirt, half and half, and then now the all pavement. So even though it's gonna, for sure, it's gonna beat you know the times from last year. It's kind of irrelevant in a way because yeah. we're kind of starting over with the street. Yeah, it's apples and oranges. Yeah. And there are, I think, seven cars in electric car class. Yeah. And it's kind of unfair because you're the stock car, right? Which is you're completely what somebody could buy off I think I'm the this only, showroom floor, right? Yeah, you yeah. could go to a Mitsubishi dealership yeah. and buy my car today. Yeah. And 
that's the difference where I feel like it's a little bit unfair because they I'm the only stock production vehicle in the entire field let alone in the electric division so it's uh I think I'm definitely at a disadvantage with that but you know it's it's kind of like you're saying it's comparing apples to oranges it's not really relevant these prototype cars that they're coming like Hiroshi's car is not relevant to my car you yeah. know they're really going to break the record that's what their goal is and um, my goal is just to prove that you can buy a stock production Mitsubishi I may drive it up the mountain it's gonna survive it's gonna definitely have enough battery life and it's gonna regenerate itself on the way back down yeah how much battery do you have left when you get to the top I mean you're flying up that mountain yeah you know I, to be honest, we haven't been able to test all the way from the bottom to the so finish, know, yeah. but we've been calculating along the way, and I think, you know, I don't even think it's going to take half the battery life out of it. And um, how does the iMove handle? It handles really well. It's surprising. It looks like a little roller skate, and um, but it it feels, I, I think I told you this before, it feels really fast when you're in it. I don't know how it looks from the outside, but, you know, when I'm in the car, it's definitely... Like, I'm, I'm getting up to set in the, in the 70s, going up the hill on it. gentlemen I am in the fastest baddest ass Camaro ever made in history this my friends is the ZL1 